Okay. What we're going to do now is the topic on the third, the last part of thermal physics high level, which is to do with the second law of thermodynamics and the law of entropy. I don't think I will be able to get the entropy done in this session. So just the, the law of thermodynamics. Okay, here we go. Is this possible? Is it possible for an object which is hot to be next to an object which is cool and there be a net transfer of thermal energy from the cool to the hot object? In other words, heat, can it go, can it go from cold to hot? This is the question. Common sense tells us, no, this is not possible. And that the second law of thermodynamics says that is not possible either. Heat cannot, or thermal energy cannot spontaneously transfer from a region of low temperature to a region of high temperature. Uh, this is a basic statement of the law, and we'll look into why this is the case next. First of all, we'll do a recap of what we did last lesson. This is a heat engine. Remember, we have this cycle of of uh, uh, thermodynamic uh, phase changes. The work is done here. The work is done here. The work done between B and C is greater than the work done on the gas between D and A, basically because the area underneath is different, if you remember that. So the work is only done between B and C and A and D. So B and C is work done, D and A is when work is done to the gas. So uh, when D, uh, D to A is when the gas contracts, so work is done on the gas. How can we compare these? Well, we know that the work done between B and C is greater than the work done between D and A because the pressure is greater. Where does this extra energy come from? Well, it must come from somewhere. And the fact is, to drive this thermodynamic cycle, we must put in thermal energy. There is also some thermal energy that comes out, but we must put in more thermal energy than we get out. Otherwise, where does that energy come from? And that's where it comes from. So the energy that we do, the work that we do, comes from the heating that we do. So in other words, the thermal energy gets in uh, section ABC must be greater than the thermal energy that's ejected, which is at CDA. And this is called a heat engine. We're getting heat to do work. On the other hand, if we do the cycle backwards, uh, we manage to get the gas to do work. Um, we know we do work to the surroundings. We, we do, sorry, we do work to the gas. Here, the gas expands, um, and there's a little bit of work to the surroundings. Here, the surroundings has to do lots of work to the gas to get it to contract. So we put in more. We have to put in a net amount of work into the gas. We do work to the gas, and as a consequence of that, we we get energy out more than the thermal energy we put in because we put in this extra um, work, this work done. So AB expansion is this amount of work. CD contraction, the work that we do, is going to be greater. Um, so the only way that can happen is that if um, we do this extra work, this work done in contracting the gas, squashing the gas at a high at a high pressure, means that we're going to get extra thermal energy out. This is a heat pump, so it basically takes heat from one source and pumps it out to uh, 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 the, uh, the other side, which is basically uh, a heat pump. We're taking heat from a cold area here and pumping it out, it out to a hot area. This is a heat pump. So the work done transfers heat. So we c if we do work, we can transfer heat from cold to hot, but only if we do the work to make that happen. It's a bit like getting a ball. A ball will not roll uphill by itself. A ball will roll downhill. But if we do work, we push the ball uphill, then the ball will go uphill. But we have to do the work. It does not spontaneously happen by itself. A heat engine. This is a, an important aspect. We can heat the cylinder. If we heat the cylinder, it expands. It does work on the surroundings. Fantastic. We're able to get a machine by ch which changes heat into work. So it heats up, it expands, and it does work. But can this happen forever? We'd like it to happen forever. We could keep on heating it, keep on doing work. But the, the uh, cylinder is not infinitely large. It's only got a certain size. So if we want this to keep on doing, we'd have to make it go back again. 
how can we make the, the cylinder contract back again? Well, we'd like it to carry on, we'd like it to do work to the surroundings, but we have to make it go back. So we have to cool it, we have to cool it to make it go back to its original position. So this is what we do, is that we have to take heat from it to make it contract again. Now, this heat that we take from it, we're not going to have any use for. We have to throw it out as quick as possible to a cold place, which withdraws the heat as quick as possible, chucks it away, so that we can go back to stage one and carry on doing work. This is the only way we can get heat to do work. So this is a, a summary. Uh, a heat engine can do work, but some heat energy has to be lost in the environment to make this happen, if we want to continue this process. So in other words, a heat engine cannot be 100% efficient. We have to throw heat out at some stage of the cycle. And here we have um, a, a schematic diagram for a heat engine. You heat it up, you do work, but we, and if we're going to ha have this continually happening, we've got to get it back to go through its first stage again. So we have to withdraw the heat from it at some stage. And, and that goes to cold reservoir, which we, where we lose this energy. This energy is degraded. So, heat that do, the heat does work, but some heat must be ejected in a cyclical process. In other words, the thermal energy transferred from the hot reservoir is equal to the thermal energy transferred to the cold reservoir plus the work done. So that's like a heat and air summary. On the other hand, if we um, we can get heat to go from cold to hot, but we have to do work. In other words, this work plus that thermal energy will add up to this energy here. So we can get this heat to go from there to there, but we have to do work to push it up here. So heat travels from cold to hot only if you do work to help it, like making a ball roll up here, like a refrigerator. A refrigerator basically takes uh, the heat from uh, a body, um, cools it down, and take, takes the, the heat and chucks it up the back of the fridge. The back of the fridge is, is hot, but it doesn't do it by itself. It can't do. It's uh, in violation of the second law of thermodynamics. The only way you can do it is by plugging it in, by getting electrical work to be done to the system to get that to happen. So the second law of thermodynamics. It's impossible to build a cyclical heat engine that does not transfer some heat to the cold reservoir. Another one is it's impossible to make a heat pump whose only effect is to transfer heat from cold to hot. In other words, there's no perfect refrigerator. Conditions for a steam engine to work. Well, you've got a hot source of energy here, a hot reservoir of energy here, that expands the piston, does the work, and we have to chuck the, some heat out of the system to make the piston cool down. The only way that can happen is if the inside of Thomas is hotter than the outside. So Thomas works particularly effective on a very cold day because the heat is a way able to draw the heat from it, make the, the, it's, uh, the idea of the piston contract much quicker if it's a cold day. So what happens is we cool it over and when Thomas goes to hell, or when Thomas is in hell, he can't leave hell. The inside 